Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. My name is Luke and we're going to be discussing the sound class in ActionScript 3. Uh, this is a class I've created that basically when you test the movie, starts playing a song that uh, you've uh, specified through a URL request. Uh, it's not designed to be aesthetic, we're just going to be covering functionality. If I click this blue button down here, it pauses the movie and if I press it again, it'll play it at the point at which it left off. This red bar right here is kind of designed to serve as a timeline and if I click at a spot on it, we can go to very various points throughout the song. Uh, you'll also notice that I've returned ID3 information about the song in this top left corner in a text field, so we can access information about the song that's being played as well. So let's go into the code. Okay, first thing we're going to do is create a folder on the desktop to host our files. I've created a folder named Sound, and inside I've got my MP3 file. Okay, next thing we're going to do is go ahead and start up Flash. We're going to go ahead and start creating our class. So go to File, New, Action Script, and let's just go ahead and save it from the get-go. Make sure you're in the folder that you uh, created on the uh, desktop to host your files. And we're going to name it SoundPlay. Uh, that's going to be the name of our class. Make sure you type a capital S and capital P. That's going to be important. And we need a uh, Flash file to go ahead and run the code we're going to be creating in the class. So go to File, New, Create New Flash File, Action Script 3.0. Um, we're going to open up the Properties panel. And in the Properties panel, go ahead and type SoundPlay, the name of the class you've created. And then hit File, Save As, and we're just going to name ours blank. Um, I usually use the word blank so I can plug in different classes if I'm experimenting with uh, different pieces of code. But you can name yours whatever you want. We're going to name ours blank. Hit save and we are good to go. Okay, so make sure you've clicked back over to the sound play tab. We're going to go ahead and start constructing our class. Hopefully you have a little bit of knowledge of uh, class construction uh, before coming into this tutorial. So start the statement off with package. Uh, we're going to do a couple of import statements as well. We're going to be using the sprite class to uh, draw our shapes to the stage. So import flash.display.sprite. We're going to also be using the graphics, uh, the graphics class uh, to actually draw out our shapes as well. So import flash display.graphics. There's going to be mouse events. Um, we're going to be clicking on stuff and uh, using those events to uh, perform different functions. So import flash.events.mouse event. Uh, also import flash.events.progress event. Alright, so we're, we're looking pretty good here. What we're going to do now is uh, one more event statement needs to be pulled in. Flash.events.event. Okay, perfect. Now, uh, this this is just the basics. Uh, right here, these, these few statements, we'll be able to use these to achieve most of the functionality in our sound class. But how do we access the actual properties of a sound file? Well, there's a couple ways you do that. First, before we can even load sound, we need to uh, use the URL request class uh, to uh, load the sound. And then we're going to do import flash.media.sound. Okay, and that's going to let us access the actual sound file. We're going to be using the ID3 info. Those are the set of tags that kind of describe a sound file once it's been loaded, including artist, title name, album name. So it import flash.media.id3 info. Okay, and last but not least, import flash.media.sound channel. And we're going to be using sound channel kind of the same way that sound works in real life, where you've got an MP3, which is a song, but when you play it, uh, whether you're playing it from an iPod or a uh, a compact disc, it has to have a channel to actually go through um, most of the cases. That's that's usually a speaker. So the sound channel kind of sets up that relationship between sound, the actual song, and what you're hearing, the parts of the song you can hear. Okay, and last but not least, we do need to make uh, two more import statements. Uh, remember when I had tested the movie, I had a uh, text field off to the left side displaying the ID3 info. So you want to import flash.text.text text field as well as import flash dot text dot text field auto size which will allow us some formatting with the information we're able to pull from the ID3 info. Okay, so now we can go ahead and start outlining our class. It's like public class sound play. Remember, it has to be the same exact name as the file, capital S, capital P, and it's going to be an extension of Sprite. Now we're going to be inheriting a lot of Sprite's basic properties uh, with the objects we draw to the stage using the graphics class, such as X and Y, and this will just allow us some extra fun functionality uh, when we're doing that. 
Okay, so now we can go ahead and start creating a few of our variables. We're going to create a sound object that's going to represent the actual MP3 we'll be using. And then we're going to create a variable named channel, which will allow us to hear the, 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 hear the sound as it plays. And that's going to be of the sound channel data type equal to a new sound channel. And that first variable is SND for sound. It's of the sound data type and equal to a new sound. Parentheses, semicolon. There's a couple of numeric, numeric values we're going to be using throughout this tutorial. Uh, one of them is pause point, P A U S E, capital P, lowercase o i n t. It's going to be of the number data type and equal to 0, 0.00. That's going to allow us to keep track of the point at which in the song uh, we've actually paused. And it's going to be determined by a math formula declared in a separate function altogether, but we'll get into that. Three positive integers, uh, position, percent, and Q. So let's go ahead and create those. Private var position of the uint data type, positive integer, private var percent, positive integer, and private var q. That's going to be a positive integer as well. And then we need a Boolean value named is playing. Uh, that'll allow us to determine whether or not an object needs to be paused if it's already if it's already been playing or where it's at and whether it's running or whether it's actually been stopped and that's going to be of a boolean data type and we're not going to give it a value just yet but let me see here what are we missing we are missing the text field private var my text field and it's going to be of the text field data type and equal to a new text field. Okay, very good. Okay, now that we've created our variables, we can go ahead and start working on our constructor. So type out public function sound play, parentheses, not returning a data type in the constructor, braces, go down one, and in comments here, I'm just going to put start music, and that'll kind of give you an idea of what the actual function is for if you lose your way in the code. Uh, we're going to start building a request. It's going to be of the URL request data type equal to a new URL request, and we're going to pass the name of the song into that URL request. In my case, it's cf.mp3. And then last but not least, we need to be able to load that object. So sound.load and then we're going to put request within the parentheses to load that song into the sound object. Now last, what we need to do before we can hear any music is set our sound channel, which we did uh, created earlier, equal to sound.play. So we're going to play the music through the channel, and now if we test our movie, we should hear music. And we do, but right now it's just a blank stage, so let's continue to add some functionality to this thing. Before we get into some of the details um, about the uh, the uh, sound actually playing, we need to add an event listener to the uh, sound object. So do SND dot add event listener, and it's going to be an event dot complete. So when the song is completely loaded, we want it to run some additional code, and the name of that function that's going to handle that for us is complete handler. You know, very creative, huh? So end that with a semicolon, and let's go ahead and start creating this complete handler. And what we're going to do in this one is um, is add those shapes to the stage that you had seen in the first movie testing. So create private function complete handler.